Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we are going to be looking at how you can remove some unwanted shadows on your subject's face when retouching. So this is a very common problem that can come along with a lot of outdoor shooting in particular but it can happen in studio too and sometimes you'll just get these unwanted shadows that are really annoying and sometimes really there's only so much that you can do with certain shadows in images and it's always best to do this right in camera the first time around. I will say that. But sometimes you'll have an image that you really like and if it wasn't just for a pesky shadow, uh, you'd really like to have it in your portfolio or you'd like to retouch it. So I will say that there are some shadows that you can remove quite easily or with a little bit of retouching and knowledge on how to do it. So there might be a few time consuming methods that you do have to implement to remove some shadows, but I wanna go through it quickly today on how you can remove some harder shadows and how you can remove some softer shadows and how I like to do that. So first off, we're gonna start with this particularly hard shadow. It is kind of going right through the model's face and it was an intentional shadow. I will let you guys know uh, when I was photographing it, but for example, if you did not want this shadow here, we can use a few different methods to remove it. So one of the first methods I'm gonna talk about is content aware. This is a very popular method of removing a lot of unwanted elements on the face, but we're first going to start by just showing you guys how it works and how you could start removing some of uh, some of the shadow here. This is not my most ideal way to remove shadows, so I'm really gonna go through this very quickly on how you can do this, but I'm gonna show you my preferred method uh, directly afterwards. So if I was to remove parts of this shadow using content aware, I would get the lasso tool up here and I'd make sure that the feathering was probably around zero pixels. And then I would start to select the shadow here or most of the shadow. And then I would go to edit content aware fill. And you can see that it does a pretty good job of removing most of that. So I would then go okay. And then we can use some other tools to then tweak some of these extra areas here. I could use a bit of dodging and burning to remove some of these areas. So if I wanted to just bring up a dodge layer, for example, a curves layer, and then hold down control I to invert, I could then get my paintbrush at 1% flow, a soft brush and white selected. And then I could kind of blend in some of these parts here into the skin tone a little bit more. So that's kind of one way and uh, a combination of a couple of different methods there that you could use to remove shadows. Now, content aware might be really easy for some shadows, but this is why it's not my favorite method is because that it doesn't always work for a lot of different shadows. So I like to use a bit more of a manual process with this. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the beginning now, our original image. And then I'm gonna show you my preferred method of removing harder shadows. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to rename this layer clone stamp. And we're going to use the clone stamp tool really to remove this harder shadow. And when I say harder shadow, I mean like a harder edged shadow overall. So we're gonna go over to our clone stamp tool on the left hand side. We're gonna make sure that we've got a really soft brush for this and kind of a softer flow too. So I'm gonna move the flow to around 40% or so. I'm going to select part of the skin tone using Alt on the keyboard and holding that down or Option on a Mac. And then I'm going to start painting over the shadow. I can use a bit more of a smaller brush and if you're using a graphics pen, it's good to have pen pressure selected or transfer under the brush settings over here. And that is going to help with really making sure the pressure of the pen is applied in the darkest part of the shadow. So this is how I would usually remove a much more difficult or harder shadow. And I would kind of just run the brush very slowly and gently over some of these areas. I like to kind of build it up a little bit more so than just completely removing the shadow altogether. But you can do this in a pretty measured way by continuing to select as well. I just feel that sometimes using the clone stamp tool will really help to retain a bit more of the texture. So we can still use that combination of dodge and burn as well to really help blend parts of the image back. 
And for now, I'm going to continue just selecting and cloning parts of this shadow away. Sometimes I'll more or less have the aim of getting the shadow, especially for harder edge shadows, to look a bit softer so they're easier to work with with other methods like dodge and burn. And that way we're not having to alter texture too much on the face. Okay, and you can see that we've sort of removed most of the shadow there. So one thing that I'm gonna do as a final touch is once again, get up Dodge and Burn. So I'm going to create a Dodge layer by using the Curves Adjustment layer. And just to make that tap bigger, we're going to move the line up and Control I to invert. And I'm gonna start painting using the Dodge tool on some of those darker kind of uneven areas there that we've just removed most of. So with Dodge, you're essentially filling in those darker spots still and really blending them back into the skin tone. And if you find you need a burn layer as well, I would just do the same thing again. So creating a curves adjustment layer, moving the line down, control I to invert. And then we've essentially made our burn layer, which I'll then start blending back some of the other areas. And as a finishing touch, if you do feel that there's any spots on the face that need a little bit of color correcting, which you might often see with trying to lighten a shadow on the face that's unwanted, you can actually do this in a couple of different ways by color correcting. You can use an adjustment layer with masking or you can use a color layer just on a new layer. I'm gonna show you a really quick way using a new layer. And we're gonna rename this layer color. And just to not confuse you guys, I'll rename these layers to Dodge and Burn. And then back to our color layer, we are going to make sure that the paintbrush is selected and making sure that it's still soft. And then I'm going to make sure it's just a little bit bigger. Still a flow at 1%. And we're gonna zoom into just a couple of different areas. We can see that there's a few little parts here where we've had the shadow and we've removed it. There's a little bit of color difference between the parts of the skin tone. So this is a really quick way of doing this. We're going to set this color layer to color in blending modes. And then selecting the color of the skin tone nearby. So holding down Alt or Option on the keyboard with our paintbrush. And then we will get the eyedropper tool for this by holding down Alt on the keyboard. Just select nearby a part of the skin tone that you wanna kind of replicate the color of. So, cause this is in the highlights, we're gonna kind of select a color that's already in the highlights over here. And then we're just going to paint over that part of the skin tone, just to kind of blend it in a little bit more with color. You can keep selecting around to make sure that you're getting variation 
with the skin tone there and that it's kind of all getting blended in. So you may have to kind of change your flow up as well if you're feeling like you can't get enough of the color onto those areas. And you can see by turning on and off that layer, you can see that there's a little bit of improvement there just over some of those spots where there might be a little bit more warmth added in and we're sort of bringing that color back. And you can do that anywhere on the skin tone that you feel that there has been a bit of a color discrepancy. So just over here as well, needs to be a little bit more color blending. And then overall, if we zoom out, we can sort of see that that is an improvement, but we're just gonna move down the opacity a little bit. I like to do this if I feel like it's gone a little bit too far, which you can start to see some bits of the color sort of popping out. So I'm just gonna move it down to around half the opacity. And we're just gonna fill in some spots here with dodge and burn a little bit more just to make sure that we're kind of really repairing that section where the shadow was. So zooming out again, I'm just gonna use burn and dodge just to smooth those sections out a little bit more. And you can always go back to using the clone stamp tool. If you feel like there's any spots that really need to be worked over, you can do that as well. I'm just gonna fix this one last part here, just on the eyelid where it's a little bit dark, where the shadow was. And we're just gonna lighten that up just a little bit. Okay, so now for a full before and after, I'm gonna go back to the original image and we're gonna go back to the before and then the after. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial of removing some unwanted shadows from a subject's face. Now, uh, there are some other ways that you can tweak this method. So for softer shadows, for example, I would usually just use a combination of dodge and burn and some color correcting methods. So using the color layer that we used or even using a selective color adjustment layer with a mask on top of that. And that's how I would usually remove a softer edged shadow. So ones that are a little bit softer and easier to remove in that sense, I would probably use that method. But for this, this is usually how I would remove them and along with the content aware if they're kind of an easier shadow to remove overall. So thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you do because I'll be posting a lot more in future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave me any requests down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.